Welcome to Through the Lens of Christ, a podcast designed to have conversation about things that are happening in culture, questions that we may have theologically, um, and other questions that impact our day in and day out lives. Our desire is to be able to build these conversations and to be able to get us to critically think, not just about the events that are happening, but how do we see these events through the lens of Christ. I hope you enjoy the conversation, and I hope it helps you to critically think through issues in our lives. Well, good morning. How's everybody doing? Good morning. Good morning. Doing fine, thanks. Uh, How are you? I'm I'm great. I actually should be doing fine. She just got back from Florida. <laughs> Sunshine, great weather. It I mean, actually rained the whole weekend. <laughs> <laughs> Is this the annual Florida visit? Do you go down there like once a year? Is that it or more than that? I try to go down once or twice, yeah. Nice. Um, my cousin got married this weekend, so that's why we were there. Oh, nice. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's nice to nice to have you back in town. It's nice to be back. <laughs> so, uh, uh, so for this episode, um, we did something a little different at uh, at church on Sunday. So we um, did a, a dedication and commissioning service for our, our new uh, church campus, um, which we're calling Community Church North, which sits in technically in Wayne. The mailing address is Campbellsport, and we're. I'm really focused on Kewaskum. So we we uh, kind of have this uh, kind of centrally located area between a bunch of kind of smaller communities. Um, and so we're we're seeing what God's going to do in that work. But a lot of a lot has been um, done there and accomplished so far. And the official launch happens in two weeks. And so we thought it would be good for the family to get together and uh, just pray over the place and uh, um, be commissioned as a as a people. So um, for this for this episode, we thought it would be good. We won't talk about everything we talked about, um, but we did spend a little time on the Great Commission. So Matthew 28, verses 16 to 20. Uh, we'll start there and uh, see where we get. So Steve, take it away. Okay, I'll just start reading. Now the 11 disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. And when they saw him, they worshiped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. Thank you. There's uh, uh, so much in here. It's just a couple of verses. And usually we start the Great Commission with actually verse uh, 18 so we talk about 18 to 20 but um i think there's um to me it's encouraging words even before that just in terms of how um god uses those who uh, by any normal standards really shouldn't be used and so so anyway so in this text is there anything that you'd like to like to talk about steve ashley well, I'll mention just briefly, you you brought up an, a good point in verse 17, the point that some doubted, which you kind of hinted at already, right? Yeah. So, well, of the, and it sounds like it's of the disciples. I mean, yeah. it seems like it's of the disciples. That's who's being talked about right now. The 11 went and they went to the mountain. Maybe there are other people around, but looks like some of the disciples probably doubted even then. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I just think it's... Uh, um. I think we have this false view that we should just have everything all figured out that you're a believer. And now, you know, it's all, you, you understand all of it. And that doesn't mean we don't pursue all of it and we don't desire to know. It's not like we just go, well, even they doubted. So let's just forget about it. Um, so, you know, there should be a passion, a hunger, a desire for us to, to understand who God is, who Christ is with the spirit inside of us, like all of those uh, uh, components. But just to know that even they doubted after everything they had seen, everything they had been through, even even seeing his his crucifixion and then the resurrection and watching him physically be resurrected um, and to still go, I'm just not sure. Um, I think it puts into perspective how deep our our, you know, our veil is that even when it's when our eyes are unveiled here, they're not they're not perfectly. We still, Paul says, we see through a glass darkly, and uh, I think that's that's true and and a little encouraging for us. And I think that doubt is like 
woven in different ways that we don't really see where it's, you know, we try to make our own plans and we try to be in charge of even just the little things throughout our day. And that like, I I'm super controlling. And so it's normal for me to just be like, this is what's going to happen. And this is, who's going to do what. And I think that a lot of that, if I were to actually like look through all of that, it's because there's doubt there, not because I think I should be in charge. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That's a, that's a good point. It does. I think, I think, yeah, it's like we doubt different things at different times. Like you were saying some people, you know, they, they doubt, they don't know what they know. Well, some people think they definitely know what they know and they should really doubt more. Right. <laughs> um, or, or what's, what's being doubted. Am I am in, in, like you said, Ashley, as I'm doing this task, am I doubting God's sovereignty? Am I doubting his knowledge over my situation? Am I doubting his control over what's happening to me? Am I doubting the way he's influencing my life? Um, I mean, I wonder what the apostle, the disciples were doubting here, doubting that he was the Christ or mm -hmm. doubting something else. I mean, there's a lot of room for doubt in, in our lives. And I, mean, I they, this is they, some, and when they saw him, they worshiped him, but some doubted, like, maybe we shouldn't be worshiping him. Right. Is that right? Yeah. I mean, I, I think it's, it leaves it a little unclear, but it is interesting that it says, he told them to go somewhere and and they did it, right? So they they trusted him enough to listen to him and follow. He got there and they worshiped him in some way acknowledging who he was, but then it says they doubted. And so yeah, it gives it gives the impression at least that they were like is is he really the son of God? Is he really the king of kings? Is he really who um but he says he is and what we what we're intending to believe that he is. And uh, yeah, I think that's, uh, again, the text doesn't say, but I, I think that's definitely part of what they're doubting. Mm -hmm. I'm glad that's, it says, faith verse 18 starts with and instead of but. So it says and, yes. right? Yes. And so, it's, you know, that's what's so continuing, right? And yeah. Jesus came and said to them, so I mean, the, to me, like the most comforting verse, I mean, or a, one of the most comforting yep. verses all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Uh, that's a pretty comforting verse. I mean, that's just, he's like, I'm just going to clear this up right now. All authority has been given to me. Yes. Yeah. And it even goes back to this idea of when you doubt, it doesn't change who he is, right? There's, there's not a, it, it didn't say like, well, because they doubted, he pulled them aside and kicked three of them out and said, you know, well, you know, I got to get you all to believe before I can do the work I need to do. Or look, I've got this to, to Ashley's point. Like he's, it doesn't matter what we're doing, where we're at, where we're at emotionally, physically, spiritually, he's still on the throne. He's still Christ. He still has all authority over heaven and earth, no matter how things seem to be broken down in the world, it doesn't change where the authority rests. And whether whether we as believers tend to doubt or not live in the true trust of, of Christ, um, the whole the whole world at large, right? The non-believing world doubts and doesn't believe. And um he's still Christ. He mm -hmm. still has all authority in heaven and earth, even when they're trying to um, operate against his his desires mm -hmm. yeah for sure and then he moves on right so he says who he is and then he turns it around and says because of who i am right therefore right so because i have all authority because of who i am you now need to respond in some way and so he, he now says that we should go and make disciples yeah, like I have all authority. Just just so you know, I have all authority, and now I'm going to tell you what to do. So, like, you should be respecting my authority, right? This is something. <laughs> it's not just it's not just a suggestion in verse 19. He just said, "I have the authority to tell you," and I'm yes. here telling you to do. So yeah. it's yeah. I mean, how you cannot get a more direct command in that i mean sometimes people say well that's you know that's just for that time or that place You're like hey here's the deal i got all authority i'm telling you exactly what to do yes yes yeah and it doesn't it, to your point it doesn't change over time this is something that is he's called each and every one of us as soon as you're called uh to the father through christ you are called into this commission and so now wh where do i go and how do i how do i make disciples and 
Um, what does it mean that we should all be baptizing in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit? And so there's there's a lot in here in terms of that command, but there's no doubt that it is a command. So we have to take time to <clears throat> actually figure it out. So and when he says go, he's not, you know, we often say the Great Commission is for the, the mission field, missions meaning overseas or somewhere else or unreached people groups or but that's not what he's talking about. He, he and as we've been going through Acts, we clearly see he's talking from from where we live to the ends of the earth. It encompasses all of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, think, thinking about so go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. So. And it's baptizing them in the name. How does that work? Baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. So the Father and Son and Holy Spirit are all right together, and we're baptizing them on behalf of, or how, do, how does that work in the name? Baptizing yeah. in the name. I'm just trying to think out loud. No, yeah. it goes. I think it goes back to where he says he has all authority, and he ties himself in John 16 and 17 to the Father and the Spirit. And so he's there. He clearly says we're all in the same will. We're all marching in the same direction. Clearly speaks to them as as separate persons, but yet the same. And I think here he's saying the same is that there is a Godhead purpose in this and that we we are called in the fullness of God to go so that there's no uh, you know lack of clarity on who's sending us and under what authority and under what power. It's fully Father, Son, Holy Spirit sending us. Right. And that, that idea of the name, what's the name mean? I mean, the name yep. is a reference to the character of God, the, the three in one. It's who he is. It's what he stands for. Um, all those things. Yeah, I was trying to yeah, think. Names, of name, right? names, name, names to us today are, are less important, right? We, we name people things because it sounds cool. Um, or, you know, and so we we lose the point, like in this time, in that culture, and even the way that God, you, you go to Revelation, the way that God reveals the importance of names, um, it, it is important. Mm -hmm. And so you, you see him, to your point, when he says in the name of, he means in the, the person of, in the character of, with the attributes of. And yeah, I think that's a, that's a really good point. It's not just some blanket, like, you know, in the name of Tom, right? We we're baptizing you. It's it's in the full character of God. We are revealing his death, burial, and resurrection, your death, burial, and resurrection from death into life. And now go live this way in the in the full character of God. Yeah. So like the name is equated to identity in some fashion, just like Adam, Ashley, Steve is related to our identity. And it's also why name calling is such a nasty business right yeah well it could be a nice yeah. business depending on depending on what's happening right but it's like yeah. hey i'm going to identify you with this name yes right? um yes. or this i because that name denotes an identity or an idea or a or something that you're you know aligning them with in your head and like so you think of me as this and and yeah. am i right name is right. pretty real. yeah yeah which i mean you see throughout Throughout Scripture, Old and New Testament, when there's major transformations, God gives new names, and you know that's not a, um, a a christening idea, right? That we go through baptism and we're given a spiritual name, but rather there are times when God says, "Abram, you're now going to be Abraham, and Sarai, you're going to be Sarah, and Saul, you're going to be Paul," and it's like we're birthing you into this new thing, and I want you to be identified in a different way. Um, and so I think that's mm -hmm. key. Names are important. You might think this is a stretch, maybe not see what you think, but you know, you know, there are a lot of people that change their name from a, maybe they were named at birth because of their gender. Um, and they decide that that gender doesn't match what they feel about themselves. And so they choose another name for themselves. So just surely just as significant as that, but also pronouns are also a source of naming um right it's it's not the exact name it's it's a stand-in for that and surely that has the same kind of connotation so 
Um, I think it does give some importance to, I'm just kind of hanging on the name here a little bit, but, you know, what we're called, how we're called, and the, the words that which we're used to call ourselves and other people um, are pretty darn significant. So changing and selecting, I mean, these days, I see on business cards that I get from certain people, they have, they list their pronouns on, you know, in the face, which this is a, when in all of human history has that ever happened? Um, and, and how is, and how it's changed and how our society and culture is trying to switch that around. But um, I, yeah. that's, I think that's, I don't think it's too much of a stretch. I think it's, I think it's a thing, yeah. even pronouns are names and they're important. Yeah. I mean, I'd say even, even beyond uh, pronouns that the, um, your political bent, right? How do I identify in everything? We've talked about it before, but the idea of identity is so important. And we tie names to all of those things because we want people to know who we are. And so we we scream those things from the rooftops, whether it's our our revised pronouns or our you know new name or our pol- political identity or and what what we're being told here in scripture is that we should have one identity. And that we're being that we first are being changed so that our only identity is in a new name, right? In the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. It's in the identity of who God is, in the identity of Christ, and the identity of what the Spirit is making us to be, and that that is to be our core identity. And everything else becomes secondary. And we've we talk about it a lot, but we've disordered the whole process. And so we we put our identity in the wrong things and we easily get confused. And to Ash's earlier point, we end up, we think we're such in control that we're going to be the ones who name us and we're going to be the ones who define us. And we, right. And that's, it's not what we see in scripture. I was, I was thinking the same thing. Cause like, it's kind of like, you know, our, the name that we're given on our birth certificates, certificates, a passive deal. Like our parents named us that. And oftentimes those names have meaning. Well, you know, you you name somebody something, you think, well, that name has this meaning, so I'm going to name them. Well, I hope they they kind of, you know, you hope they live up to the expectations of the name, yeah. right? Unless you name them something sort super dastardly, right? Which no one would do those kind. Well, yes, I do know people that have done that, it's just ridiculous things. But but right, but now when you when you're older and all of a sudden I'm going to choose a new name for myself that describes myself in a different way, or even these days, oftentimes I think the pronouns are more are intended to be more descriptive. I'm going to use that to describe more of me because I want to express myself through my name to other people so that you know something more about what I think of myself and also what I think of you um, by the way I call myself. Right, so, right. Well, yeah. and like yeah. you said, Adam, the, our whole identity is already set out for us in scripture and yet we're still like constantly looking in the world for our identity and it, like when you talk about it that way, it's like, how dumb that like, I'm constantly looking for other things to place my identity in when it is already set for me and it is so clearly laid out. And yet it's still like, what about this piece of the world? And what about this piece of the culture? And yeah, yeah. which yeah, it goes back to, and some doubt it, mm-hmm. right? It, it's that I, I doubt my identity. I doubt that, that being a Christian is the most important thing. And so I I know it should be, right? I understand what scripture says, but yet I live in this world that seems to push me in a billion different directions. And I have a sin nature and I have a flesh that really wants all these other things. And I want to be identified as all these other things. And I have a, I have an image of my head, who I am that, you know, even if we're not talking about a transgender identity, we're still trying to change us from who we're not into something we desire to be. That's the whole lure of social media, right? Is just to present ourselves in some fashion that identifies us in the way we prefer when we've actually been given the most important identity. Um, and so how do you how do you live into that? And it's a command that we live into it because we don't want to do it. We're never commanded in scripture to do things we naturally want to do, right? We're commanded to do things that are opposed to our nature where he's going, no, I want to make it clear. You're not going to want to do this. You have to do it. And, and it's a, and it's for our benefit. It's for our good. It's for his glory. And, and we, we fight with it. So. And I think the social media makes it so easy to change your identity constantly. I mean, you can dig into the latest fad and have a completely different social media identity in an hour. It's yeah. It's all at your fingertips. 
or or carry on multiple identities at the same time. I'm a mm-hmm. compilation of different things depending on the group that I'm speaking to. Yeah. So none of them match my real identity, <laughs> my core identity. It's all in one sense, it's all surface level. It's not really a depth of identity. Um, yeah. Yeah. Super yeah. Nice. Um, so yeah, God's got to open people's eyes to that. He has to open our eyes to that too, who I really am um, and who he really is. And those seem to me to be the two big things, right? When he, when he comes into our life, he shows us who he is and who we are. And at that point, there's an inflection point that has to be dealt with. I think that's part of what it's meant by people saying, you know, Jesus is there. You have to do something with him, either ignore him, reject him, accept him, whatever it is. Um, yeah. Something has to be done well, because yeah. he just he just doesn't go away. Um, he <laughs> is there. Yeah. 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 And I, I think the uh, even even the command itself, right, go and make disciples and baptize them, teach them to to obey or live out everything that I've commanded this isn't a work that's done in a, in a second, right? We understand well, the the technical justification, the idea of that we're positionally saved in an instant through the work of God, through what Christ did on the cross, through the, the spirits leading, convicting, totally get it. But there's this whole lifelong us now understanding our new identity. And, you know, if we we learn our new identity through the character of God revealed in scripture. We learn our new identity through experientially listening to the spirit in us in the world and confirming that back through scripture. We understand more of our identity every day. And some days, again, going back to 17, some days we doubt. We doubt our identity. We doubt who we are in Christ. We doubt what he's doing in us. Um, but that doesn't change our position and it doesn't change uh, the the path that we're on. And I think that's the encouragement of the Great Commission. It's not just about, you know, go do something. It's about live into who you are in Christ. And then in that, we're going to be compelled to do something. And doing it together. I think it's the a big part of that too, is making sure that it's not an isolated thing that it's we as the church are going out and doing that because it's it's important for you to have i need other people who are older and more mature than me to remind me of my identity sometimes and to help me learn what it means to go make disciples and what that all looks like and doing it isolated is impossible mm-hmm. yeah it is yeah even the uh the text i hit on a little bit in, in first corinthians where um paul talks about how we're the temple and then he says that together you are the temple of God. And I think it's this, to your point about being the importance of being in corporate worship and being part of a body together helps us to reveal a greater vision of who we are, that, you know, we are this kind of mosaic and we're all kind of these broken muddled pieces of the perfection of who God is, but yet together we see the picture even more clearly. And we should be drawn to the identity of Christ in us but we should also be drawn to the identity of Christ in the body and in the family and in the fullness of the body. Uh, Ephesians, uh, Paul talks about how we should be attaining to the to the unity of faith, so that we may attain the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. And um, I just think that trying to pursue it on our own, we're going to be really confused about our identity. We're going to be really confused trying to sort this whole thing out. But doing it together, to your point, Ashley, is why we've been called into community together so that we can learn identity together so that we can also understand it individually. Mm -hmm. Amen. All right. Well, thank you guys. Yep. Thanks. Thank you.